This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Gravity Warfare. Gravity Warfare is a super fun uh, dexterity game for two to six people uh, that uh, my family has been enjoying a heck of a lot when I brought this to uh, my little game store, set it up. Uh, people have swarmed the table, had a fun, watched it, cheered, booed, what have you. Uh, my gaming group, this is like a fabulous little warm-up game or, or cool-down game that we have when we're getting ready to play something super serious because it's a dexterity game, right? And dexterity games fill that niche where you can teach them in about five seconds. Uh, it's pretty evident as to what you have to do in most games. There is some strategy involved with this game because there's like definite like kind of like uh, like challenges that you can give other players and you're going to have an alien race if you play with them that is going to give you a special power, stuff like that. So there is a little bit of strategy going on, but mostly what this comes down to is whether or not you're able to skillfully place these cool little lunar landers and also everybody gets these cool little like, I don't know, like kind of TIE fighter-esque spaceships or whatever, you'll be placing these on the board. And there's tons of different variants and options that you can use when you play the game as well, which really opens it up to like larger groups of people as far as like their skill sets, if you will. If you just want to put the put the pieces on the board and see where you can stack them and place them, great, fine, go ahead, that's a lot of fun. You There's dice that you roll that add different variant to it. There is, you know, a ton of these like, you know, cards that will force people to play, the, play their pieces in a certain way. And there's even like a stack it challenge type of option as well. So, um, and I'll talk about that and some more things as I show you how to play the game. So, uh, let me show you Gravity Warfare and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. So this is Gravity Warfare. As I said, it is a dexterity game. Uh, and there are lots of different ways that you can play this. Now, the biggest thing is, is that since it's a dexterity game, uh, what you'll be doing uh, during the game is that on your turn, uh, you will be rolling uh, dice, and the dice are going to tell you what piece of yours that you have to use and what spot on the board you have to place that on. Now, and as the game progresses, more and more of these di uh, pieces will be put on the board Board, causing the weight to shift as you can see uh, one by one and obviously like the players are going to be trying to balance these pieces carefully as they place them on the board and of course remember like you might roll like like there's a moon on there like if you rolled moon on your turn you would be forced to place you know like your piece on the moon you're like oh geez don't fall that sort of thing so there's all kinds of fun aspects like that eventually something's going to happen where a piece is going to get placed and no Mind you, like, this has, like, this isn't, like, a super smooth surface. It has, like, a grip to it, if you will. And, you know, so, like, you, you can feel pretty comfortable. Notice how I, I'm, I'm kind of balanced doing the balancing act. But eventually, you know, something will happen, and I'm kind of forcing the issue here a little bit. But something will happen, and things are going to fall off, like you just saw right there. All right, so that's the basic premise of the game. The whole point of the game is that normally, you know, and this is just the most basic way you can play, is that each person, you'll be rolling these dice and you'll be trying to place all of your pieces on the board before anybody else. If you have a situation where four pieces fall off during one person's turn, the game is declared over and then you determine who wins by like the number of pieces they have on on the board and like you just kind of determine a winner that, that route. Or like I said, if somebody manages to get all of their pieces on the board all at once, they will win the game as well. Now, compounding this obviously is the dice rolling because the dice rolling is going to determine the piece. So like you have, you know, this like little, this symbol right there, you have to put, put one of these like lander pieces on. And, you know, if you roll uh, this side right there, that instructs you to put like kind of this spaceship looking piece on the board. Now, the thing is, is that Obviously, that by itself, you can play that with anybody, and they're all going to kind of get how the game is played, and it is a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, my kids and I really enjoy this. We enjoy kind of stack things up and handle handle as best as possible. Now, there is, this is a two-sided board. This is more of like a uh, spaceship uh, spot, and you can just take this piece right off and put it, you know, flip it over to the other side. And then you can play the other side. And you can, can kind of see there's this like little fine little spot there where uh, this piece just rests 
perfectly in there. And I should also mention that there, this is attached by a magnet to this. So when you do set it up, there's going to be discrepancies as far as, you know, where you screwed this piece in, you know, so it's, so it's stable and stuff like that. And so you just adjust the spot of that, of uh, that pin piece on that magnet until you can get it. So it, it it's relatively flat, uh, to begin the game. All right. Now, so that by itself, like I said, is a very fun game. It, you know, I just, I like these dexterity type games. I like watching, uh, like, you know, the Pratt Falls and like, of course there's those tension moments. Like, Oh geez, you know, as you got to place things, but there is like, a lot more ways that you can play the game that, that beyond just that. So they do, uh, the designers of the game instituted a couple of things. First, like, and mind you, the stuff I'm going to show you here is just their suggestions of different ideas that you can use to play the game. You don't have to use any of this. You can use anything of whatever you want. You can make up your own rules, if you will. But regardless, so like you have these pieces that are these, these uh, like races, if you will, because you're in, in space. And it'll tell you exactly what, like this people, you may teleport or move around any piece from the board to any other location on the board. You know, so like if you're being forced to, if, if, if the board is like tip way this way and you're being forced to place one on this, this nebula right here, or this, this, uh, galaxy right here, you could like move one of these pieces and then move it over to the other side, if you will. You know, like just special little powers like that. Now these special powers that you get, um, you have to like, these will, uh, be a one-time use type of thing. And once you use it, you flip the card over and you're no longer at it. You know, just, just ways to break the rules. And of course, those are always cool. And you just deal those out randomly or, you know, like you could pick them or however you want to do it. But the big thing in this game is the cards. Now, the most, like probably the best way, in my opinion, to play the game is to play with a hand of cards. To begin with, each person gets one of these cards. They get a guardian card. And the guardian card is just a catch-all. You get to use it once and allows the player to avoid, um, like if you don't like, uh, if, you drew, if you drew a card that is telling you to do something you don't want to do, you can use the guardian card for that. If you don't like your role, you can avoid that. Or you can avoid a challenge from another player. Now you might be saying, well, what's a challenge from another player? Well, after you get this guardian card, what will happen is that each player will be dealt seven cards. And normally there's one race that gets to keep more cards, but normally you pick five of those cards and you keep them. And as you play the game, you are allowed through like, you know, good play uh, to draw more, but you're going to get um, uh, like a hand of these cards. And the hand of these cards basically tells you uh, like certain challenges that you can drop on somebody uh, that they have to do. So like, here's like bounded. Um, the player must place the piece entirely on the zone shown on the die. So if you had a situation, normally what happens is like, oh, well you have to, you know, you're gonna have to place it on, you know, this, uh, this moon right here, whatever. And normally, as long as half of the, the, the piece is on the moon, that is completely valid. But if you have a situation like that where you play that card on somebody, they then have to place the whole thing on the moon. Now, mind you, this can be a problem if you have a situation where, let's say, somebody's already placed one on the moon, like so. Now you might be saying, well, how am I going to get all of another piece on that moon if somebody makes me do that? Well, the neat thing here, and if you look at these pieces, they've actually made them so you can see those little pegs there, and you can see these pegs here. They actually made them so they stack really well. So if that was what you have to do, then you would have to go ahead and place it like uh, so. Yeah, I <laughs> see, that's why this game's so much fun. It's like, oh geez, you know, like, is it gonna fall? So there's things like that. Um, and uh, then you can actually have a rule that makes you, you know, stick it on, on top of the next one. Um, the one that I like probably the most, well, one that's really dirty is this one, don't look. You gotta, you gotta close your eyes and like attempt to put it on there, which, you know, obviously is super tough, but this is the one that gets me every single time where you have to use chopsticks. And mind you, the rules state that you have to use chopsticks <laughs> And you can't use them in one hand. You can't, you know, do the, the cheater chopsticks and use them in both hands. So, like, if I had to place, let's just roll a location for me here. Uh, let's see what I get. So, oh, I got to put it on Saturn. So the blue Saturn over there. So and I have, I'm yellow and I have to use this piece. So now let's see how bad I do here. I'm not the best chopstick person in the world. So, ugh. and so go ahead. I got to place it. Perfect. But now here's the thing though. 
you can combine challenges. So when somebody has, they know what the rules, and the, the big rule here is that you can't just say, okay, I gotta place this, then place it. Like you have to say, okay, my, my, I have to place one of these landers and I have to place it on Saturn and I have to use chops and I ha that's what it is. So now somebody, let's say somebody plays that I have to use chopsticks, but then somebody else can also say, and you know what, I'm gonna play this. So you have to stack it as well. So now I'm in a situation where, you know, and I'm gonna have to go ahead and pick this guy up. Oh geez, see, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a good chopstick guy here. All right, and now I have to somehow, <laughs> ah, okay, see, and now since I dropped that, now like what happens there is I don't get to retry because I fail. I have to take that back and my turn is over. So, you, and so that's a big thing too. You, these pieces can't end up lying on their side and they have to abide by the rules that the, the cards they have. So, um, you can, again, play this just to see who wins, but another fun way you can play is actually you play for points. And so then as you play the game, you will earn different numbers of points for like the actions that you do. So if you if you, you win the game by putting all five pieces on, for example, you get five points. And you can, you can use the gems. These are worth one, these are worth five, and these are worth negative one. And you can use the gems to record points and you can just play a series of rounds of the game that you can say, okay, we're going to play to 30 points, we're going to play to 50 points, or whatever. You can play teams, you know, and play up to like a total team score of 100 points or 80 points or whatever, just whatever you want. Once again, speaking to the fact that you have like several different ways that you can go about playing this game. Now, I'm going to actually set something up so I can show you something. Hopefully I can make it happen. But if you have, and I'm going to show you some more of the cards in a little bit, but I want to show you how negative points happen. So you have, if you have a situation, if... Let me just actually use a different color here. Let's use one of these. If you have a situation where, okay, so a piece fell off. As long as only three pieces, one to three pieces fall off, the game does continue. You don't have a situation where the game is over. It's only when four or more pieces fall off that you actually stop and, and, and stop the game and total up scores. If that happens, the person that causes pieces drop then gets negative points for each piece that drops. And so you take um, the old red crystals to show that. Or you can take away points that you already have. Either way works just fine. But that's the way that you're going to do point scoring. Now I'm trying to find the card um, you know, that, that I, I always kind of like. And also, you can get cards that... Um, like our different events thing, where it's like, uh, you know, take any piece you like from the platform and give it to another player, and color is not a factor. So you, if somebody's like about ready to run out of cards, and you can be like, yo, really? Nope, sorry. You can have one of these where it's like you can use this card any time to force a player to play another player's turn. So like you, you if you want to make somebody else do something tough. But this, this is the good one, the spin it. So as you, when you play the the, the game. You are allowed when it's your turn, because obviously you're sitting around the table and like, let's say you're sitting over here and you got to put one on the asteroid, let's say. And so you can't reach over there. You are allowed to very carefully on your turn, spin the board until you you have better access to the spot that you need. Now, mind you, if it's your turn and something falls off and you do that, that's bad news for you. So let's just go ahead and place this one on the asteroid. Okay, so however, and let me just kind of spin this back a little bit so you can kind of see the board. So let me just say, okay, so I'm green. Let's say I'm green. I got to place this on the board. And let me roll a location as I'm going to try to stop this. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to, and I'm going to roll a location here. And so it's, it's Saturn. But then somebody plays, like I said, this one, which I love is the spin it one. Now, remember... These can be combined with, you could have spin it along with bound it and all those other things, you can combine those. If you do cancel the challenges, you get to cancel all of them. Also, the, uh, the, the, the having to do it blindfolded with your eyes closed, that's the only challenge that gets played on you and that you don't have to like spin it and everything else. So, okay, so you don't have to use chopsticks while you're blind, thank goodness. But anyway, so like now you have a situation where it has to be spinning slightly. And, you know, and you can argue with your friends as far as, you know, how tough it has to be as far as spinning. But now you're like, uh, 
Okay, you know, and then you can place it, and luckily, you know, and mind you, when if it's still spinning with another player's turn, they are allowed to stop it on their turn, so they can go ahead and, and, and move it back or move it to the location. So as you can see, there's lots of different cards that have lots of different things going on that are going to affect what you're doing. And, you know, obviously, uh, like, this is one of those things where as people get closer uh, to pulling off the victory, uh, you will be, like, you know, gunning for them with your cards. They're going to force them to have tougher and tougher shots to do it. As a matter of fact, at the very beginning of the game, it is not very common for anybody to really use those challenges that much. You're kind of waiting to see what will happen and waiting to see who jumps up ahead. Now, there is one other thing I want to talk about before I talk about... Well, actually, there's two things. So, if you roll on the, 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 the die that tells you which... Um, thing to in you know, which which uh, piece to use and let's say you only have one of these left and you don't roll that on the die you get to roll for it again and if you miss it again you get one of these green gems and your turn is over you don't place anything and then if you get two green gems on your next on, on the on a turn following the turn the turn that you get the second green gem if you roll something on the die that doesn't uh coincide with the piece that you have left you can turn in two green gems to basically choose which piece that you want to place onto the board so like if you are stuck and you just can't seem to roll that they you know you do are able to you know use those gems to enable you to possibly win the game so as you play like and you get these cards used up you might be wondering how do you get more cards back you are allowed to like, as you earn points as you play, if you're playing a point game, you can purchase with one point. You can draw two cards and keep one. Uh, if the active player receives one or more challenges during the turn and they successfully complete them, they get to do the same thing. Draw two cards and choose one. If the active player doesn't get any challenges, and they may choose to draw two cards from this deck, basically randomly giving them challenges that they'll have to... Uh, you know, facilitate and, and, and do on their turn. Then, if they do that, and also you do ignore any you do it or green event cards when, when you draw those two. If you do this successfully, you once again just get to draw two cards and keep one. So, it's one of those things where it's like you, if, if people, if, if you're a good player and people make you uh, try harder, then you get a reward. And if you take it upon yourself to try harder on your turn, you can get a reward. Uh, you know, so, uh, and, you know, and the cards, obviously, are, are, like, the big fun part of the game, for me, anyway, because nothing's better than when somebody's, like, faced with a, a tough challenge of, like, you know, like, once again, I mean, this is, this is not really indicative of how, um, the board usually looks like. I mean, usually the board is, is, you know, full of all these pieces, and, you know, if somebody all of a sudden, like, you know, they're being, oh, jeez, oh, man, ah, okay, well, um, anyway, well, as you can see, like, as, as you get further and further, as I was doing right there, like, as things get tougher and tougher, like, compounding on that problem with, with the, uh, with the special cards on, on the, on the turn, that's, like, the fun kind of screw your neighbor part of the game that I really, really enjoy. And plus, like I said, even if you do have a bad luck and somebody gives you a card that makes it tough for you to do what you had to do, like, the rounds of this go by really quickly, and so you you just get done, uh, you restock, and you start up again, and and just have some more fun. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just as far as dexterity games go, this one really really hit all cylinders for me. It is it's got a fun theme. It's it's bright. It's colorful. Uh, whenever I brought this to my local game store and played it, people were like, "What is that? That is awesome! It's got a great table presence." Everybody's having fun. Everybody's interacting. Everybody's cheering or booing or whatever when it is their turn. It's just, it's fantastic. But let me talk more about all of that uh, in my final thoughts. Oh, jeez. Gravity. Gravity. <laughs> okay, that's enough. All right, so uh, there was another thing I wanted to talk to you about quickly. Um, so there is like a, a, a variation called um, Towering Troops. And I mentioned it actually in the beginning and I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't go on. Something I should have showed you is that these, like you don't actually have to just constantly like stack um, these on top of each other. Like, you know, obviously those stack really well. But they've made these pieces... And mind you, this is just a prototype. I believe these are just 3D printed. I'm not sure. Um, but they've made these pieces actually so these kind of stick on there as well. And they can go on top like so as well. So you can actually have 
these stack really, really well together. And the towering troops method is like actually like everything gets kind of stacked on top of each other, which obviously if things start falling, that's going to compound your problems. The towering troops variant is a lot of fun, but I definitely would play that with more skilled players. Now, something I mentioned as far as the different skill levels um, being open to a larger group of people, like I said, um, like when I play it with my six-year-old son, it's like, yeah, like, you know, it's like he gets the, how the dice work, he gets how, the, how things work as far as that's concerned. But, you know, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to throw in a bunch of the card play or anything like that. Maybe we'll draw a card and, like, Dad's got to close his eyes and do it, and he can laugh and have a lot of fun. But, I mean, for the most part, like, we, we, we try to, like, play it a little more down to, like, his skill level as far as that goes. Now, mind you, his hands don't shake like a crazy man like his old mans do, so he's actually got a leg up as far as that's, uh, that's concerned. But... You know, uh, it definitely does, like, you, you can variable these games pretty well. That's one of, the, like, the charm, uh, charming things about all dexterity games that I play is that they are very, very family-friendly, and they're, they're just kind of, like, open to that casual gamer where, like, you know, they don't want to sit down and learn how to play, you know, some super dense card game or whatever. They just want to sit down and have some fun with their family and have a good time. And it's like, okay, you know, Grandpa, come on over here. We'll do this. You know, watch it. And, and, and my son, Caleb, and my grandpa, my dad, have played it, and they've had a lot of fun, you know, just because, you know, it's like I said, it's it's something that they both can understand. You can kind of see, even though, you know, there's, you know, 60 some odd years in difference of the age there, um, you know, they're both digging it and they're both having a fabulous time playing it, which is something that I really, really appreciate about these types of games. Now, obviously, the table presentation, the look, the theme, everything like that is just kind of added on and makes the game super super cool there's just something so awesome about the whole like towering thing weebling and wobbling back and forth um there's been some other dexterity games that have implemented that that whole process of how everything kind of seems to sway and 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 in those games too the, it was just really really fun to watch and see and this game is is just like those and they came before it this one adds like I said, the stackable pieces, it adds the table presence, it adds like the scoring options, all those things that just makes a game like this fun. And you know, without all that stuff, it would still be fun, but the designers took it upon themselves to just add that extra level, to add extra depth, extra crunchiness, extra enjoyment into the box. And I, for those reasons, if you are a dexterity game fan, if you're looking for something that your whole family can enjoy, I strongly suggest you check out Gravity Warfare. I think you will have a heck of a lot of fun with it. So, there you go. If you've got any questions about it, uh, please ask away. If you want to tell me what your favorite dexterity game is, maybe I haven't heard of it and I want to track that down for my family, that'd be pretty cool. Go ahead and leave that in the comments. Um, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time on The Undead Viking, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.